I really want to talk about uh, uh, Killer Mike's. Oh yes, speech. I don't, it's not even a speech. It was just his like. That's Killer Mike being Killer Mike, dude. We've been longtime Killer Mike fans uh, here. You've been like a, an my amazing friend. celebrator of Killer Mike. He's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Top five, top seven favorite rappers of all time. And the only reason I say top seven because I have a top seven. But he's one of my favorite rappers of all time. He's just a great human being. Yeah. First met Killer Mike in two thousand. Three, maybe oh two, oh three, maybe I don't remember. Back in Columbia, South Carolina, Hot One O Three Nine, and I just remember the first time I ever met him because he was with Big Boy and they was doing the Purple Ribbon All Stars album, and he's he he goes, "Yo, I love your Jays," because I had on the Jordan Threes, and it might have been fake, but I don't even know. Right. But he gave me a compliment. And I was like, okay, dope. And it's just like that whole day we ended up hanging out because you know I was doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina, time, so I interviewed them, and then yeah. we hung out at a club later on, and he's. Yeah. Yo, Killer Mike has never been anything but Killer Mike. The Killer Mike y'all are just witnessing now and saying how brilliant he is and this and that. Yep. He as he has he has never mm-hmm. been another way. Ever. It is what it's it's pretty amazing what what we're seeing. It's like we're watching the message and the messenger unite, and you get to see this like every so often in history mm-hmm. where. The time requires a message and a messenger. And sometimes you get the messenger and sometimes you get the message and you get them separately. But right now there is a time in history where this message is needed and we have a messenger who can deliver it and the message that needs to be delivered. Well, and it is fucking. You're, you're, ugh, ab- you're absolutely right. But I'm going to tell you, the, it is so fucking brilliant. Here's man. the most brilliant yeah. thing about Killer Mike, right? I've, I've, Killer Mike has always been Killer Mike, and I've seen people react to him in different ways. Remember, they tried to cancel Killer Mike a couple years ago for some bullshit because mm-hmm. he decided to do exactly what everybody's applauding him for right mm-hmm. now. Killer Mike went and sat with another black man on mm-hmm. NRA television mm-hmm. to discuss two A. Killer Mike's a big two A guy, and everybody was killing him simply because he was on NRA television. But you're applauding him now because this week he told y'all at the Revolt Summit, "Fuck all that bickering, fuck all your differences." Fuck, you know, arguing over which master to serve. Yes. He was like, if even if you don't agree with this person, take the good of what they're saying. Mm. If you don't agree with that person, take the good of what they're saying. Mm. And let's all put together those good ideas and come up with an agenda that can benefit us all. You know how I know that that this really touched a chord? Talk to me. Is I had different groups of people reach out. I had conservative friends reach out. I had really uber liberal friends reach out unbeknownst to each other with the same thing. Yo, have you listened to this killer Mike thing? Yo, this guy's the truth. It was zero pander. You're late. First of all, listen, they're late, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, remember a time requires everything. It would have been too early before. You know, who now the it's was? necessary. You know who the X factor who? was that got killer Mike's message registering with all of those different people who Candace Owens. Interesting. And when I saw Candace Owens was going to be at the Revolt Summit, you know, people start hitting me, sending it to me, saying this yeah. is fucked up, whatever, whatever. And no, I'm like, no, no, why? No. You need the voice. I'm like, it's not fucked up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why it's not fucked up. You may not agree with everything Candace Owens says. You may not agree with who she chooses to support, mm-hmm. Donald Trump. But sometimes Candace says some things. That are accurate. Lot, and, and, and not even sometimes. She says some things that I agree with. Yes. And she says some things that I don't agree with. Guess what? Just like everybody fucking out. Just like your parents. Just like Just like your uncle. Just like everybody. your aunt. Everybody. You can go through Thanksgiving dinner. You can listen to a political Killer debate. Killer Mike said something on that stage, man. And I, I, would tell, I used to tell Van this all the time when it came to reference to Candace Owens. Because there's certain things Candace would say. Mm. And I'd be like, bro, that's exactly what the Nation of Islam says. That's exactly what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says. That's exactly what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says. She may not know that. You know what I'm saying? But those are some of the things and that what did they Mike say. say. Mike pointed at her and said, everything she's saying, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been saying and, for years. And what did when he when he challenged the audience, he he, he didn't panic. He was like, he was like, This is your homework. Go out and study these people. Absolutely. And he said one person, and then Candace was like, tried to give some pushback. And he no, was like, Candace didn't get pushback. Candace said, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Go, go study these people. And then I think Candace said one thing, and he was like, hold on, I got you. Well, no, what, I got no, no, you. No, no. What, what he told her to her point, he was yeah. saying to her, uh, because when T.I. asked her, when, when, was the, uh, when was America ever great? Right, right, right. And Candace was like, we can make bl- black America great again. And T.I. was like, no, answer the question. When was America ever great? Yeah. You know, for black people or whatever, whatever. He didn't give Candace a chance to answer the question, which I think he should yeah. have. 
But if you go back and listen to Killer Mike, Killer Mike actually answered the question. Right. Killer Mike gave a moment in time where he thought it was great for black people in this country. And Candace was like, that's what I was trying to say. And he goes, no. <laughs> you, I got to. Yeah. You didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had your moment yeah, 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 to get yeah. this off and you didn't say it. So let me handle it. Right, and he was right. like, but that ain't in the sight. That's not a diss to you. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. just saying you didn't get it. Like, let me get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yo, man. Killer Mike is just a brilliant dude. But, but think about that, right? It's like, here's this guy up there who's sitting with what seem to be mortal enemies when they're talking, right? Like a T.I. and Candace, when they're talking to each other, they seem to be mortal enemies. They That's seem only like, because of the way the media has painted it. No, no, no. T.I. is the hero. No, I Candace know. is the villain. No, I know, I know. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like, even in their even in their debate, they're not really having dialogue, right? They're both like kind of talking to each other and nothing, nothing is really getting done. Doesn't mean that T.I. doesn't truly believe and want to help with his idea. And so does Candace. She wants to help with hers, right? This is what I'm talking about, message and messenger. Mike comes in and says something, and then both Candace and T.I. agree. If you watch T.I. when he's talking to Candace, like, and don't get me wrong, he had his moments where he pushed back on Candace hard. Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of times when Candace was talking, when she was talking about fathers not being in the home, yeah, and yeah. the illegal immigrants and everything. T.I. was shaking his head like, okay, that's the point. She got a point. And even when she said what she said about the immigrants, T.I. pushed back on that and was like, so what? Killer Mike explained why she was right. Mm. Killer Mike was like, I agree with her. You know what? It, One it, thing she said that registered with me a lot, black people haven't had, black people haven't realized their own political power. Yes. Like, you know, it would be dope if we learned how to vote in these blocks. When you take the 13% of the population and we moved yep. like how the Tea Party moved. And what she was trying to say was, yep. yo, y'all got all this political cachet now. Black people, we had this little cachet now. But the brown people about to have that in a minute. You know what I'm saying? So, so get on board. But what Killer Mike was saying to her was, you're right when it comes to the jobs and all of that stuff like that. But when it comes to illegal immigration, they're not just looking at brown people. They're looking at black people, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he said, uh, America is always going to have a slave class. And if the slave class ain't black people, if the slave class ain't brown people, it'll be those people that are mass in, 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 incarcerated. That's not America. That's capitalism. Well, that's America's a capitalist country. Right, 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 right. But yeah, yeah it, it is It is bigger than just America. Meaning, like, a, capitalist, a capitalist system is always going to have... Have a slave class. A, a quote-unquote slave class. Like, the, the, when we develop the minimum wage, that just replaces... Well, America's different, yeah, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Because of the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment literally says, if you're in prison, you're a slave again. Sure, sure, sure. So, sure, sure, it's sure, sure. like... <laughs> right, so, right. But so, it, whether it's black people, illegal immigrants, if it's not them, it's, they're going to take those people that are incarcerated, which usually are... High levels of high populations of black people, right. and they'll be the new slave class. So right. That's what Killer Mike was saying. We can't just be so but so gun ho about keeping yeah, yeah. everybody out and saying fuck all illegal immigrants. Right, but outside of uh, just immigrants. like imprisonment, it it, it is going to be part of a capitalistic system where you're going to have a certain amount of people work for the other people. I mean, that's yeah. that's just what happens. And then, I mean, there's an interesting. I mean, I like the political aspect of it more so. Than dude, I, I just love, and we can get into that discussion later. But like, I just love the idea. What he said was, stop trying to pick. Stop bickering over who's the best master. What we need to do is come together and decide what we want. And we need to ask everybody here that disagrees and find the things we all agree, agree on. And we need to have 10 points. And then we need to serve those up to every single politician Absolutely. that wants our votes and say, if you want our votes, this you have to want. meet. And you know what? Fuck yeah. Do that shit. Absolutely. Because that's literally, think about this. That's what every other group does. <laughs> right? And they have advantages on you guys, yeah. right? There's like shared history and that kind of stuff like that. But there's... Literally, when an immigrant group moves to America, they vote in blocks. They vote in blocks, and that is why these certain immigrant groups they they have a small uh, you know area that they occupy. It might be in New York, it might be in parts of Brooklyn, it might be down to wherever it is, and they'll vote in blocks and they'll get representation from their block mm -hmm. in you know state assemblymen, Absolutely. and then eventually that kind of moves up. But at least they're understood. Now, are they going to have to sacrifice some things? Yeah, they are. You always got to sacrifice you things. You always got to sacrifice. But listen, it does nothing to just complain and yell and, not at all. and tweet and fucking hashtag. Start making and, moves and in I, this game. I agree. And that's why I said Candace was the X Factor because when I saw that she was going to be on that revolt stage, people was hitting me saying, oh, this is fucked up, whatever, whatever. And I said, the beauty about this right here is they're going to have a conversation, right? Mm. And they may get at each other, whatever, whatever. But I knew Candace was going to say some things. That was going to register because Candace, I don't think Candace has ever been in front of an 
an audience that black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think she's been in front of an audience of black people, but you know the black I'm talking about. Yes. That black that hoots and hollers at you. Revolt and black. There you go. There we you go. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Bulls you. That, yep. That's Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> Keep digging your grave, Damon Lemon Black. All right? <laughs> okay? But I knew that she was going to say some things that was going to connect, and I knew the people that checked for her were going to see Killer Mike. Yeah. And even T.I. I didn't know Tamika was going to be on the stage, but I knew that they were going to say some things that was that, that Killer Mike was going to connect with people too mm. you know what I'm saying and I think that helps to bridge gaps and make people realize man we cause all you need is a couple things in common with somebody to realize like one thing yeah really yeah that's you it you need one thing in common that's it every time you're in that's Aguila it. you're in one of these fancy resorts and you one, connect with you have a conversation it's one thing that makes you just right you start kicking it when you start telling each other your whole fucking life story it could be by the way it could be something as simple as your kids that's it I meet somebody I met a dude the other day I met somebody in Turks and Caicos this guy and he's from Long Island I, can't, I wish I could remember his name he had three daughters I got three daughters that's it so I'm like yeah he was a hoe in a past life huh and he was like <laughs> was I? <laughs> was I? I <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm talking to him. My wife talking to his wife. We just kicking it. We laughing. We joking. We sharing stories and experiences. That's all it takes. One thing. That's it. Simple as that. And they, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. But no, that's what that's what I loved about it. And I thought, um, I just thought it was a great conversation. I want to see Revolt do more of that. I feel Dude, like, uh, can we salute Diddy or the producers, whoever put this together, or what what the idea behind it was? You got to salute Diddy. I mean, he put his that's name. That's his on network. It. Yeah, that's but his network. When but I think of the name of the network, Revolt. Yes, I just think that for the next year, because we're we're in such a weird place right now. I don't even want to call it weird because it's actually a great time mm -hmm. where hip hop and politics are colliding on a mass pop culture level. Even though hip hop is pop culture, right? But I mean, if you listen to hip hop for years, you've always had your Chuck D's, you've always had your Ice Cubes, you've always had your Killer Mikes, you've always had these guys that talk about social commentary. They talk about things of social redeeming value. They've always talked about political things that's been going on. Like Killer Mike has songs like "Fuck Ronald Reagan." Like they, you've uh, impeached the president, Ice Cube. You've always heard this in the music, mm -hmm. but now. It's like, like you said, it's, 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 it's being presented in such a digestible way. You know what I'm saying? You got to give Angela Rye a lot of credit for that, too. Angela Rye, whether you agree with her or not, she knows how to talk that language that connects with that hip hop audience. When she's on CNN and she's using hip hop references, it makes it, it, it people embrace it in a different way. Ebony K. Williams. She's on State of the Culture with Joe Budden and Remy. Mm. She's an attorney. She knows politics, but she just knows how to put it in a digestible way. Yeah. Killer Mike, super academic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he just yeah. knows how to spit that shit in a, in a digestible way. He's using the language yeah. of the people. They know how to communicate. Yes, yeah, yeah. man. Yes. Was Angela yes. part of that uh, part of that conversation? Nah, it was Tamika Mallory. Uh, what's Katrina's last name? Pearson, I think. Yeah. I think Katrina so. Pearson. Uh, Killer Mike, T.I., and I cannot remember the other brother's name. I never saw him before that. And who moderated Summit? Jeff Johnson. Salute to Jeff. I was on a plane with Jeff this weekend. Cousin Jeff. Cousin Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I just thought it was a good conversation, man, because it was just, it, it shows black people aren't monolithic. Dude, we are, we are witnessing a profound time in black American if history. If we're willing to man. listen. Even if it's not, it's like, that conversation right there will be it could be talked about in history. Did you watch the whole hour, 18 minutes? No, no, I didn't. I Did didn't watch the whole hour. And I will. And no, I will. Really I'm good. curious it really in good. it. Uh, I watched several chunks of it, but like that conversation right there could be talked about in history in the same way they talk about, you know, uh, when Lincoln spoke at, what, what, what was the the school that they have right there in East Village? Cooper Union? Cooper Union. You know what I mean? Like, like this transition in ideology, this transition and this kind of like removal from like this dogmatic approach to politics that black people have been expected to have for so long, which is I'm black, I'm democratic because the Democrats vote for me. It's like, no, I'm black and I have my issues that I care about. And then whoever the fuck cares about my issues is going to get my vote. By the way, salute to Killer Mike. None of that is new rhetoric. No, no, Mike's been saying this, dude. But not, not even from yeah, Mike. This from, is Elijah Muhammad. This is Malcolm X. This, this is Marcus brilliant Garvey. idiots. We've this been brilliant saying idiots. this on but brilliant idiots from them. for That's fucking years. You see how I wear on my neck every yeah. day, Elijah Muhammad. Like, all of that is old rhetoric. That's why I love Nipsey so much, right? Mm -hmm. Because Nipsey is a new symbol for old values. Because Nipsey used to study the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Sure. He used to study Malcolm X. He's the do for self model. He's that guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like when people look at him and what he's doing, that's that's been going on. Saying Killer Mike is the same way. He fall, he's fruit off that tree. But everything he said is absolutely right. You free. Act like it. 